Good morning. And you're all very welcome to All Souls this morning. If you're visiting, for those that don't know me, I'm Alistair Bell. I'm the assistant minister here. And I was watching last week's service online. Trish, like where's Trish, loved those jokes. So I thought, before I start the service, I have to share one that I have. A Presbyterian minister, a Baptist minister, the Roman Catholic priest and the Methodist minister were all having a discussion. Their church had been overrun by squirrels. How were they going to deal with it? The Presbyterian minister called a prayer meeting and after consideration, they decided that the squirrels were predestined to be there and as part of God's divine will and they shouldn't be interfered with. The Baptist deacons met. The squirrels had taken up lodgings in the baptistry, so they decided they were covered over in the hope that the squirrels might drown. But they escaped, and there were twice as many as the previous week. The Methodist minister, well, they were not in a position to harm any of God's creation. So they humanely caught the squirrels and released them some miles from the village. Three days later, they were back. The Roman Catholic priest said that their best and most effective solution was that he baptized the squirrels and registered them as members of the church. And now they only see them at Easter and Christmas. Or the other one, the two pieces of bread who got married. Everything was going well until they decided to toast the bride and groom. That's the end of the stand-up. See, Trish, you can balance them against your jokes from the notice board last week. But we come together for a time of meditation, prayer and song. We come together to reflect as a community. And so I want to use these words from a little book produced by the Reverend Savile Hicks of our Dublin congregation on St. Stephen's Green in 1931. And Hicks was a minister there for some 52 years. In the midst of our daily toil, we pause for a little while that we might strive to set our life beneath the sight of God and receive from him wisdom to understand its errors, strength to meet its sorrows and power to rise above its cares. We ask not that he will make our way easy for us, but rather that he will give us strength to endure all the discipline of experience, whether joyous or sad, and that he will grant us wisdom to make even the sorrows and the hardships of life the means by which our character may be strengthened and uplifted. We would desire to know more and more certainly the demands of duty and would gain steadfastness in the fulfillment of them. Amid the changing shadows of opinion, we have beheld as afar off the glory of of his unfading light. And we would learn by the teaching and example of the great and the good of every race and of every age, how he is ever working with all who search for truth and labor for righteousness. Let us seek, therefore, the guidance of his spirit that we may walk more faithfully in the way of Jesus. Amen. And may we join together in our first hymn in the Red Book. It's hymn number 327, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us.
Good morning. We welcome the sunshine and the signs of spring. My reading will be from a local poet, born in Belfast and raised in Carrickfergus. The particular piece I will read was recalled to mind by a remark of Chris Hudson a few weeks ago. I can't remember which, which remark. It's finally optimistic in its hope of coming through the evils of the world and of growth. Prayer Before Birth by Louis McNeese. I'm not yet born, oh hear me. Let not the blood-sacking rat, bat, or the rat, or the stoat, or the club-footed ghoul come near me. I'm not yet born, console me. I fear that the human race may with tall walls war me, with strong drugs stoke me, with wise lies lure me, on black racks rack me, in blood baths roll me. I'm not yet born, provide me, with water to dander me, grass to grow for me, trees to talk to me, sky to sing to me, birds and a white light in the back of my mind to guide me. I'm not yet born, forgive me, for the sins that in me the world shall commit, my words when they speak to me, my thoughts when they think me, my treason engendered by traitors beyond me, my life when they murder by means of my hands, my death when they live me. I'm not yet born, rehearse me, and the parts I must play and the cues I must take when old men lecture me, bureaucrats hector me, mountains frown at me, lovers laugh at me, and the white waves call me to folly, and the desert calls me to doom, and the beggar refuses my gift, and my children curse me. I'm not yet born, oh hear me, let not man who's beast or thinks he is God come near me. I'm not yet born, oh fill me with strength against those who would freeze my humanity, would dragoon me into a legal automaton, would make me a cog in a machine, a thing with one face, a thing, and against all those who would dissipate my entirety, would blow me like thistledown, hither and thither, or hither and thither, like waters held in the hand, spill, would spill me. Let them make, not make me a stone, and let them not spill me. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. And now may we enter into a period of prayer and reflection. Loving God, we pause for a while in our lives to come together as a community, to reflect, to rest, to listen to that small voice of calm. Wherever we come from in our lives, we come together this morning. And as we come together this morning, we're acutely aware of all that is happening in the globe around us, of the war in Ukraine, of the earthquakes in Syria and Turkey, those left homeless, those displaced, those unsure where their future will be. May you be ever present with them as they face the challenges of life. As we gather this morning, we think of the tragic circumstances in Oma and Wednesday night and pray for Detective Chief Inspector John Calwell. May he know your blessing. May his family know your blessing. May the trauma caused to all those in that sports ground that night May they trust in you for strength. We think of all those who have been injured in the line of duty, recently and in the past, those who bear the scars of protecting us 
protecting our futures, not just here but across the globe. We think too of those who are ill at the moment, in body or in mind, not just from this congregation, but from around the world. May they know a peace, an understanding. May they take time out to sit in quietness, to listen to your voice. We think of those who mourn. May they be comforted. May their memories help through their challenging times. And so in a moment of silence, we bring all our petitions before you, remembering, of course, that Friday is the World Day of Prayer. And so we take all our challenges, all our concerns, but also our thankfulness and our joy before you now. And loving God, you know what's going on in each of our lives. You know the challenges we face, spoken and unspoken. And we ask for your care and compassion in that ever-loving God that you are to help us through troubled times. And so may we stand in body or in spirit to say the prayer which Jesus taught us. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now our choir will sing.
Thank you to the choir. As I'm sure you all know, this is, of course, our first Sunday in Lent. And at this time, we remember the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, having been baptized by John the Baptist and received the Holy Spirit. So for a second reading, I want to read from Luke 4, verses 1 to 13. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days, Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say people cannot live by bread alone. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine and I give them to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you worship me. Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He will order his angels to protect and guard you, and they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures say, also say, you must not test the Lord your God. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. Amen. And we give thanks for our reading this morning and ask for God's interpretation into our hearts and into our minds. And so let us join together in our second hymn of praise in the Red Book, hymn number 323, O God of Bethel, by whose hand.
Just before I commence my sermon, and just if the technology works, fingers crossed, this is something new to try out, there's a song that has been weighing quite heavy on my mind lately, and I want to play it for you to just sit and think and slow down.
Thank you particularly to Alan and the technical team for that new little bit of a change to what we normally do in All Souls. But that piece of music really for the last little while has spoken to me. It was sung by Norwegian artist Sissel, if I've pronounced her name right, at the 2019 Pioneer concert. I certainly have to say I was mesmerized by it the first time I heard it on my Spotify account. It was a challenging period in my life when I heard it and really not taking time to think about things. I literally had to pull the car into the side of the road and I have to say there was a tear or two listening to it. But in reading about that particular performance at the concert, I certainly wasn't alone in having the song having that effect. It is, of course, based on Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God, and was written by Chuck Gerrand. The song describes the experience of many, of many, of us, to be able to hear that still voice in our hearts. We have to slow down in life. But why share that particular song today? Well, this is, as I said, the first Sunday in Lent, a time when maybe we traditionally give something up to remember from our reading that Jesus gave up during the time in the wilderness. It's the start of that Easter story, which we all know so well. But it's a time, I believe, for us also to reflect on our lives, to slow down. Hence my opening words of Savile Hicks, in the midst of our daily toil, we pause. How often in life now do we pause? I know I don't do it often enough. And how do we pause? How do we say thank you for what people do for us? Or to say thanks to God who gives us life, no matter, as Savile Hicks said, how challenging that may be in our lives. Maybe we won't give anything up for Lent. I know I won't because I don't have any willpower. I know that within myself. But we can reflect. We can be still. It reminds me of a reading of Father Liam Lawton in his book, Where God Hides. He says that we're all pilgrims on a journey. And pilgrim is derived from the Latin Peregrinus, if I have pronounced that well. I'll ask some of the Latin scholars later. Meaning, and per, meaning through. Agar, meaning land or field. The pilgrim is one who passes through to ventures beyond, beyond their space, to look into the unknown, to look into unknown territories and search for completion or further understanding of the world. Central to any pilgrimage is that notion of solitude and silence, to take time to be still and to listen. We cannot journey in life alone, and some people we encounter will change our lives forever. Sometimes by chance, very often when we least expect it, and that encounter becomes a grace-filled moment. Silence can be good. There is an old Jewish saying, carefully observe the way of your heart draws you and then choose the way with all your strength. When we enter into this inner journey of silence, we get in touch with our deeper selves and hopefully hear that inner 
voice of God. Lawton later says, when we are called into solitude, we learn more about ourselves and learn to hear the voice of God who can only be heard in the silence. It reminds me of those words from Ecclesiastes, a time to speak and a time to be silent. And I suppose it is akin to the greatest qualities of real friendship, that of the ability to be silent in the company of someone whom we love. Although nowadays that could be more down to that we're both on our phones at the period of time as opposed to any other reason. Which leads me on to another point. While on holiday at the start of the month, a break before the madness happens in tourism in Belfast, and we welcome some 170 cruise ships this year and countless other things, while on holiday my phone decided to stop. I figured maybe it needed some downtime too, some silence, but it didn't come back to life. I've lost all my contacts and goodness knows what else. So if you're texting me at the minute, please put your name on it so I know who you are. It becomes a little bit problematic. And know before anyone says it, I'm not technologically minded, so there's no backup and there's no, no nothing, unfortunately. Colin tried to persuade me that I needed to move forward this year and not have a paper diary. Put it all on your phone. Lucky enough, the diary was backed up, thank goodness. So I'm not totally all at miss. And it's nice when you see what's up that I can actually see who people are and that makes life a bit easier. But from Sunday until I came home on Friday, I had no phone. I was forced into relaxing. And I have to say I enjoyed it, although I did go through a tough few days at the start uh, with no phone. But it forced me to take time out. And I have to say, I'm all the better for it. Although I know many of my friends, colleagues, think I've fallen out with them because I haven't texted them or got back to them, but I can't because I don't have their number yet. Sometimes illness forces people to do exactly the same. And sadly, our own family has experienced that over the last number of weeks also. In this period of Lent, if we don't give anything up, at least take some time to reflect for yourself. What's important in life? Don't take anything or anyone for granted. You never know what's around the corner and when they might not be there. It did remind me of Carol's reading the other week about, I've heard it as a fisherman, the contented fisherman, to sit back and relax. And remember, slow down and listen for that soft voice of calm. Amen. Your offering will now be received.
Can I thank Julian for his reading and also to Trevor and the choir today and thank you to Alan and Muriel for doing something a little bit different for me this morning and challenging what we normally do but for me it was certainly worth it. The beautiful flowers today are donated by Anne Stewart and also Carol you have an announcement as well. I'm repeating the announcement that I made last week, but we've a bit of progress on it as well. I just want to say that this, we're having a mystery Irish wine and cheese do the day before St. Patrick's Day, which is the 16th of March. But before I tell you anything more about it, I repeat that again, uh, we had the very successful uh, talk from Isabella on Tuesday night on portraits of Irish women and Irish men. And we had about 70 people here. The church was really very full, and it was, it was excellent, right? She started with a lovely portrait of Seamus Heaney, and she finished with the John Lavery portraits of Hazel, his wife. And I hadn't really quite realized it, but she said that they were like, John Lavery was one of the big celebrities. Him and the wife were like a celebrity couple. And she suggested maybe like a Harry and Meghan but I wasn't quite sure. I don't think they'd quite the downside that Harry and Meghan had, right? So it was a very, very good night. So anyway, we're having then this mystery wine and cheese then on the 16th, but then just to tell you that after that, in the month of May, we also, the events committee has or is organizing a trip to Rathlin Island on a Saturday in May. So you could remember that as well. Now, the mystery wine and cheese then is uh, 15 pounds and what we've got then tonight or today is that Julian, who collected the collection with me, it will be at the back of the church taking your names for anybody who is thinking of coming and together with hopefully you'll bring a few friends. It's basically to have a very nice night. Trevor is the master of ceremonies or the uh, officiating at it and uh, we will have wine to taste and Trevor will tell us how to taste it properly and then we will also have more wine available in case you haven't had enough wine after you do your tastings, there will be more available. You'll also be given cheese and little canopies, so it's not really a full dinner you're having but it is a kind of light supper that there will be with it as well. So that is Thursday night, half past seven, um, mystery wine and cheese, oh yes and of course, sorry, so going along with that, Brian will be doing a selection of his beautifully sung songs um, with his guitar, right? And he will do something Irishy in that as well, a touch of Irish in that. So if you uh, could give uh, Julian your names today, it would be very helpful because we want to build up some idea of how many people are coming so as we know how much wine to buy and cheese and all the rest of it. Okay, thank you very much. And then just one final uh, announcement. On Tuesday night, I know Alan was there, there was the launch of a website, inclusivefaith.lgbt, uh, and it's, there's little cards at the back. If you know anyone uh, of faith who are looking to find out more details about welcoming churches, please go along there. There's a number of little videos on it as well, explaining um, a welcome from many churches, but also giving resource for people. So it's a very valuable resource for anyone to use. So please do pick up a little card. Please do have a look. It is most valuable. Tuesday night seemed to be a very busy night for many different people between uh, lectures here, lunch of this, and a number of other different events having happened. And now Trevor is going to play for us.
Thank you, Trevor. And just before our closing hymn, I'd remind you that there is, <coughs> pardon me, tea and coffee available at the end. <coughs> so please do stay and join with us. I always smile when I see this hymn, Fight the Good Fight, as I was reminded by one uh, of my former work colleagues that it was played at a wedding once. So I'm not quite sure uh, how that works out for the happy couple. But let us join together in the Red Book hymn number 198, Fight the Good Fight with All Thy Might. Because of those who came before, we are, in spite of their feelings, we believe. Because of and in spite of the horizons of their vision, we too dream. Let us go remembering to praise, to live in the moment, to love mightily, and to bow to mystery. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in us and those whom we love this day and forevermore. Amen.
shouldn't be fled in church. It's a beer drinking song. Oh. 